Hello, Sawyer here. Welcome to Real Numbers, the show that pits your math skills against real-world problems. This episode's problem of the week is an extension of last week's challenge, so let's first discuss the solution for that. Spoiler alert. For last episode's problem of the week, we were designing an ideal snow cone holder. Our requirements for this holder. We wanted it to be cone-shaped, because obviously. We wanted the lip of the cone to exactly fit around the equator of a five centimeter radius sphere of flavored ice, and we needed the volume of the cone to equal the volume of the hemisphere of slush to be fit into it. The shape of a cone is entirely determined by two parameters, the radius of its base and its height. We are given that the base of our cone is exactly the same circle as the equator of this five centimeter sphere, so we know it has radius five centimeters. Now we just have to use the requirement that the volume of the cone is equal to the volume of the hemisphere of slush to determine the other parameter, the height of the cone. As we change the height of the cone from zero to higher and higher, its volume smoothly increases, so it makes sense that at some point, its volume will exactly equal the volume of the hemisphere. Let's remember the relevant formulae. The hemisphere's volume is one half the sphere's volume, four thirds pi r cubed. So we can plug that in and then plug in five centimeters for the radius. And simplify the whole thing to get the hemisphere's volume is 250 pi over three centimeters cubed. A cone's volume is one third the base area times the height. The height is what we're trying to solve for. So we can plug in the base area of pi r squared and plug in five centimeters for the radius again to get 25 pi over three centimeters squared times the height. Now setting these two volumes equal to each other, we can divide by 25 pi over three centimeters squared from both sides to get the height is 10 centimeters. That is, the cone should have the same height as the diameter of the sphere. Nice. Now that we are armed with the exact specifications of our idealized snow cone holder, we're ready to present this episode's problem of the week. To use this snow cone holder, we will reshape the bottom half of the five centimeter radius sphere of slush into an inverted cone of radius five centimeters and height 10 centimeters. If we want to move the least amount of slush in this reshaping, we should shave off some amount of snow from just beneath the equator, the part of the sphere that is wider than the cone. That shaved ice will be packed into the point of the cone that dips below the sphere of the snowball. The problem of the week is, what is the radius of the ring at the bottom of the part of the snowball that gets shaved off? Another way to ask this, if we were to superimpose our spherical snowball with the cone we are fitting it into, what is the radius of their circle of intersection? But wait, a bonus problem for the students familiar with integral calculus in the audience. What is the total volume of the displaced shaved ice in our snowball? Submit your answers to these problems and remember to share your work. I'll see you on next week's episode of Real Numbers, where we will solve these conical conundrums and present another challenge.